Mix it with Mike, plugin of the week from Universal Audio and SoftTube is the TubeTech CL1B Mark II. So this is an update or an upgraded version from the original CL1B that SoftTube uh, released uh, years ago. And uh, this is available both from SoftTube natively, also is available from uh, Universal Audio in their latest update. And uh, this is an amazing compressor. So uh, part of the difference between this and the original version is that on the you get a higher quality graphics, so you can see the clarity on that right there. Uh, they made improvements in the sound quality by employing some of their uh, more current um, modeling techniques and all of that sort of stuff. And then they just went through uh, top to bottom and did it all again. And added in a few features, which actually make it more usable. All right, so let's go through it. So the this original compressor and this is a um and what they call an all tube so i'll put in quotes all tube opto compressor so that just means that there's tubes in the circuit there's transformers on the circuit because they talk about that in the documentation and uh, it's an optical circuit that actually does the compression so that's along the lines of like a la2a uh, is the most famous optical compressor by teletronics so what you get with this is a sort of very clear transparent, low distortion type of compression that's very powerful. When this came out, which was in the late 80s, 1987 was when it was officially released and this came into studios, this is became a regular thing on vocal tracks because you could really even out a vocal track incredibly well, get a lot of balance out of it while doing a minimum uh, to the frequency response. Uh, so it would sort of do it in a very transparent way. And it's a very difficult thing to understand, but, um, well, it's actually quite simple. As you get more compression, typically what happens is the high frequency response will start to suppress. Uh, part of this is a saturation thing. Uh, it also depends very much on what it is that you're pushing signal into. But usually high frequencies will suffer as you start to saturate and, uh, you know, flatten out the sound. And the opto compressors in particular are very good at making that kind of clean, you know, and uh, um, an LA-2A, it will get warm as you start to push in, you know, more gain reduction, and you can hear it a little bit here too on this, but uh, it's pretty amazing, the transparency. So we'll go through with a couple things. I'm going to feed in actually a dirty vocal sound just so you can hear the transparency of this tube tech. Uh, so you'll hear it in a minute. So what we have here is an output volume. So this is a makeup gain. Now this makeup gain is only for the compressed signal. So there's a parallel compression. And if you adjust this, it's adjusting the amount of compression independent of the dry signal. So be aware of that. Um, there's a ratio which goes from 2 to 1 to 10 to 1. We have a threshold uh, here uh, which goes, I believe, plus 20 uh, all the way down to minus 40. And uh, we have uh, an attack. Now there's, there's well, we go there are different attack and release settings here. So we'll get back to the attack and release timings and all of that. So there is a fixed setting. And uh, when you work with a fixed second setting, it gives you a one millisecond attack and a 50 millisecond release. So nothing happens with these knobs here. You just have this one fixed setting and it's actually very powerful, it works pretty well. You could go to manual mode and now these guys kick in. So in manual mode, when you get to the attack, you have uh, on the attack time side, you have 0.5 milliseconds on the attack and up as slow as 300 milliseconds. So that gives you a much broader range, a faster attack setting time and uh, much longer, so it gives you a lot of control on that end. Um, and then on the release time, at its fastest, it's 50 milliseconds, so that's the same as the fixed, and then it goes all the way down to 10 seconds, so you could just get that game reduction needle just sort of sit there solidly if you need to. Now, there's also a fixed manual mode, and this is the closest thing you'll get to some kind of a sort of broadcast limiter or kind of a hybrid auto-release kind of thing where what you have is in the fixed manual mode, you will have the uh, attack time of the fixed setting, which is one millisecond. So it's always one millisecond on the attack. And then the release time gives you the actual release time. So you still have control over the release time. But what happens then, the attack now takes on a different function. And so what you'll have is the, um, the one millisecond attack, the transient cuts through, the game reduction starts. Now the attack time here will determine how long it takes before the release time setting here takes over. 
And so what you'll get is an initial recovery, and then uh, this will determine how long it takes for the secondary recovery. And that's why I say it's kind of like a like a little bit like a broadcast limiter. A lot of those broadcast limiters are even like the Fairchild. When you go to the time constant four, five, or six, it will give you two or even three stages of of release time. All right, so that's a, a way of just kind of suppressing the gain, so it doesn't just go right back to where it was before. That's important in you know if more for broadcast than for audio, but it actually comes in quite handy for stuff like that here. Okay, so uh, so with all of those combinations of things. The added features here is a sidechain, uh, low cut filter. So you have two options, uh, off or three options, off 80 hertz and 220 as, as your options there. So that allows you to control uh, what frequency content uh, is triggering the gain reduction. So if you put it on drums and the kick is over triggering, you can filter it out, that type of thing, or a bass or something like that if you put it on a mix. And then you have the parallel compression. So this neither these two features don't exist on the original uh, gear. Okay. So let's start with a vocal. I'm going to solo it up. And uh, so what we'll hear is uh, a little bit of this. I'll put it in a little makeup game. Now, um, if you're used to the soft tube components, you usually see the setting number show up down at the bottom here. Let's take it over by the UA uh, bar, but up top here. So you'll see the settings here that allow you to, uh, so when you do a setting there, you can at least see what it is that your uh, settings are working at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a fixed setting here. So these are negated, and let's just go through with the vocal here, and we'll dial this in pretty quickly here. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real, so tired of letting go. Well, is it too damn hard or is it too damn soft, well, man, you just never know. Right, so one button that I skipped over quickly here is the ratio, which goes 2 to 1 up to 10 to 1. Now, um, when I adjust this here, so it defaults to 6 to 1, apparently, just uh, noticing that here as I'm flipping through it, you can see up here. I'm going to bring it down here a little bit, closer to uh, down to two to one, which is not at this dot. It's all the way down here, so but that's true to the original. Um, just so we can get a little bit more even game reduction here. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real? So tired of letting go. Well, is it too damn hard or is it too damn soft? Well, man, you just never know. All right. So tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real? So tired of letting go. All right, so you could hear the clarity and the focus that it just kind of brings a... a around it. So there's a component here, you know, when you get into the uh, the tubes and the transformers, um, that is going to create a tonal coloration, but, you know, but still like a very clear sound. And I've always loved optical compressors for kind of bringing an air or presence around things. Uh, so something like this, opto compressors are really great on basses when you want a bass uh, that you're having a difficulty trying to get to image well in a mix. This works great. On something like that. In this particular case of this song, it's like a punk song. The bass here is very distorted, so you're not going to get the same qualitative effect. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but I want to show you just here on the vocal how powerful it is, and then we'll go in and do some parallel stuff just to show you how you can hit it hard too and get some amazing stuff out of it. All right, so uh, now I'm going to go to the manual setting here and kind of work this a little bit so you got a sense of what it's like here. So I could go to a faster attack time and a fast release, and, uh, and this will get me a lot like the uh, fast attack and release setting. But uh, um, let's just play around with this a little bit. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. All right, so still very responsive. I'm going to slow this down now. I'm going to slow this down to about three milliseconds or so. You can see that up here. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. 
Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real? So tired of letting go. Well, is it too damn hard or is it too damn soft? Well, man, you just never know. And okay. I- so you could again, you could get the same kind of thing there. Now, this uh, this can um, this you're going to hear the difference here more so in the drums when I go to the drum demonstration. But I just want to kind of show you this. So what we have here is now we have auto attack, a one millisecond attack, and then what I'm going to do is go through and adjust the attack setting here. Uh, just so, we, and I'm gonna uh, slow down the release here, uh, so that what we could do is we'll have the one millisecond attack. We'll have a slightly slower release, and then this is gonna control how long it takes for that release to kind of kick in. All right, so a little bit confusing, but let's uh, check this out. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real, so tired of letting go. Well, is it too damn hard or is it too damn soft, well, man, you just never know. And I hate everything about you. Okay, so just slowing this down a little bit helps to kind of smooth it out. So let me go, is AB somewhere between here and the fastest release attack setting. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real, so tired of letting go. So what this doesn't, as opposed to the, the singular attack release setting of the fixed or the manual, this allows me to kind of smooth out the release characteristic. I, admittedly, this is subtle. There's subtle differences. If you're just looking at the game reduction meter, you'll notice that it's a little bit more consistently moving within there. Now, you could still go to higher ratios. Sometimes the effect of a higher ratio usually has a bit of a warming characteristic, but we're also going to have to adjust the threshold. So let's just check that out quick. Tired of the sunshine, tired of the straight line, time to just let it go. Tired of the politics, tired of the hypocrites, man, you just never know. I'm tired of the way it feels, is it fake or is it real, so tired of letting go. Well, is it too damn hard or is it too damn soft? So again, a very subtle effect, but usually you'll get a little bit more of that. You notice that the game reduction didn't go wacky uh, from there, so I'm not sure if it works on some kind of a knee characteristic uh, where switching the ratio doesn't change the game reduction by a significant amount as mathematically you would expect it to. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a lot of vintage components do that, the, like, the 1176s and stuff like that. All right, so let's move on, and uh, we'll leave this alone here for a second, drop this for a second, and let's kind of go to something, uh, have a little more fun here, get aggressive with it. And... Uh, um, Okay, so this is going to be uh, parallel on the drums. So I'm going to isolate the drums here for a second. And let's kind of take a focus on this. All right, so what I have here is, you'll notice that there, the, the mix-in is only like about 20%, right? So as I did, or 22% is what it is. Have it in a fixed manual mode. And this is where you're really going to hear this timing difference. But um, I'll A-B this in and out. Here we go. So that's mixing in the compressed signal, so you could hear that pumping and breathing. So these are the timings that I ended up with. Uh, the release of, you know, 3.0, that's, I don't think, that's not milliseconds, obviously. All right, so here we go. So you can hear as I, as I increase the attack here, what ends up happening here with the fixed manual mode is that it's adding too long of a delay to the release. So I'm not getting that same kind of crazy pumping and breathing that I like. So now I'm going to pull this back here.
So what I'm really listening for here when I'm doing this, especially with the release time, is getting that breathing to sort of come back and drop right back onto the downbeat. So it has like this kind of musical feeling to it. And just to give you an idea of what this sounds like all dry, or all wet here. This is what, what, what the uh, compressed signal sounds like. Right, so you really hear that pumping and breathing. Now I'm going to pull it back here. Right, so you hear that depth open up, you know, that's really where, you know, something like this is amazing. Now, on this particular thing, just it so happens when I was doing this, I set the side chain here to 220 just to get the kick on the snare to sort of uh, trigger it a little bit more evenly. But you really get that that heavy pumping and breathing. So let's do something similar here uh, with the guitars. And I kind of had pulled something up here. I also, uh, this is all wet right now. So let's just see where we're at right here. Um, All right, so let me go to a fixed manual setting. Let's kind of do this from scratch a little bit here. Just uh, bring in the vocals quickly and then uh, check that out. Just uh, do a similar kind of parallel here. Looks like I have something set up. Let's see what it sounds like. So this is more of a density parallel, although there's a fast release. It's uh, not really uh, going to pump and breathe as much because of the lower threshold. But let's have a listen to all three of these in and out, just to get a sense of what it can do in parallel.
really clear how like it, it it just brings in a liveness to it. Um, it's a very powerful compressor. There's just so many great uses for it. Um, you know, guitars. You can make it very transparent and clean sounding, and everything from acoustic basses, strings, amazing sounds great on a bass, on electric bass. Um, you know, especially for a clean sound. I always use this on vocals. Uh, whenever the, one of these was available, it was instantly on the vocal track because it was just like a, the most transparent, clean, you know, great, powerful way of just like controlling and balancing out a vocal track um, of compressors that I've found. So it's sort of semi-vintage because it's uh, late 80s, but still an amazing compressor to this day. Still one of the top sellers for, if not the top seller for tube tech. Um, an amazing unit and, and a great emulation and a great re-release by uh, SoftTube and, of course, Universal and the Universal Audio platform in, uh, in this case. So, great one. Um, and uh, worthy of a plug-in of the week. So, there you have it. UA SoftTube TubeTech CL1B Mark II Plug-in of the Week.